Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. The news is live on Joy 99.7 FM here in Accra. In Kumasi, we are on Love 99.5 FM. We are also live in all 16 regions of Ghana through 30 affiliates on Radio Somali in Wa. We are on Radio Justice in Tamale, A1 Radio in Bogatanga, Jata FM in Karaga. We are live on X Spaces here on Facebook, here on myjoyonline.com. The midday news is sponsored by Petro Soul, your clean fuel in full quantity. Petro Soul is always a delightful experience. Also brought to you by Dura Plus Ghana Limited, producers of quality PV. BC and HDP pipes and water tank. We are the only water storage tank with a level indicator. Where Dura Plus goes, water always flows. The afternoon, Mr. F- Minister for Finance insists on strict implementation of the revised cash waterfall mechanism, warning any deviation from the agreed plan to pay players in the power sector will further widen the over $1.3 billion debt. Confident that the effective implementation of the cash waterfall mechanism will help in, in preventing accumulation. Of, of new areas. Meanwhile, ECG has complied with the first order directed by the PURC. We have details, but Joy News is learning. President Akufuado is unhappy with what appears to be tension between the ECG and the Ministry of Energy and the PURC as Kelly Gajepo's role as board chair of ECG is taking over by Herbert Krapper. We have details of all that is unfolding in the state agencies. Also, members of the locked-up investment holders demand payment for the funds as it hit the streets in protests. They are wicked people. I work for about 30 five years with the VRA as a technical engineer. So all these money that I accrued when I retired and it was given to me, I deposited everything. We have updates of that protest. Also, case against approval of President Akufado's ministerial nominees held up momentarily for verification of facts about the service of documents from the court on the parties involved. We have a blow-by-blow account of proceedings at the Supreme Court where it is imagined that lawyer Nick Pakusamwado refused service of documents from the court. And then later, local organizing committee of the African Games hits back at the minority. As it assures it will avail itself for scrutiny in the coming days, we'll get to hear from the chairman on how, among others, the intermittent power cuts increase the cost of organizing the games. At any point in time, there will be challenges, financial, physical. How do you set your priorities? How does he want us to grow sports in Ghana? How does he want? It should come up with, with options. That's and more in this afternoon's edition of the Midday News. This is your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Please do stay on for details. Many thanks for your company. I am MFA Apau. Let's settle for details now. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam is warning that any deviation from implementation of payment to players in the power sector, another revised cash waterfall mechanism, will worsen the already dire situation in the energy sector. The mechanism is to ensure fair and equitable allocation of revenues occurring from electricity tariffs approved by the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PRC. ECG under the arrangement is to distribute the tariff revenues it collects among all sector players along the electricity value chain but the latest audit report by the PricewaterhouseCoopers indicates ECG has not been paying to some of the players. The finance minister is warning that the non-payment of the agreed terms is further widening the debt in the sector. Listen. The energy sector continues to be a border for us because the areas as we know it today is still huge on our books. However, we've seen significant progress in addressing the, not just the areas, but also in preventing the accumulation of of areas going forward. The updated energy sector recovery program is intended to achieve just that. And most of you may know that we have a remodeled or revised cash waterfall uh, mechanism that guarantees payment to IPPs and also to our state-owned enterprises. And the Ministry of Finance is also supporting where there are shortfalls. Therefore, we are very confident that the effective implementation of the cash waterfall mechanism will help in preventing accumulation of, of new areas. 
Well, Joy News is learning the energy sector debt is almost hitting $1.4 billion. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam says government has entered into a debt restructuring agreement with the independent power producers to spread the payment within five years. We are almost through with our negotiations with the IPPs to restructure the, the areas over several years. And as I speak to you, I believe in the next two to three weeks, we'll be signing those agreements with the IPPs we have concluded negotiations with. We have even started showing uh, good faith to the IPPs by making some payments that we had agreed to do with them. And this is why you do not hear the threats that you used to hear and read about from IPPs uh, threatening to, to shut down. And so we are very confident that the signing of these agreements will pave way for spreading the areas over uh, several years, an average of uh, five years, to provide some relief uh, to us uh, to put our house in, in order to ensure that uh, we do not go back to the days of huge, huge areas in the energy sector. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam. Now let's focus on the PURC's directive to the ECG. The very first directive we know expired on Monday. The second one expiring today. My colleague Elton Brobe has been monitoring uh, this particular directive and the, the feuds between the PURC and the ECG. Joins me in studio. So uh, Elton, order one and two expiring. What do we know? So MFA, according to the PRC, the other one expired on Monday and they've provided updates on what they have so far. So they provided from A to E. So A is the Electricity Company of Ghana shall submit to the Cash Water for Mechanism Standing Committee the actual revenue collected for the approval month. And according to the PRC, ECG has fully complied with the directive. The second one is the CWM Standing Committee shall approve the revenue allocation percentage and a respective amount based on the net revenue collected. According to the PRC, ECG has again complied with this directive. The third one is that the cash water for mechanism standard committee shall submit the approved revenue allocation percentage to the ecg and this according to the PRC, has also been complied with the d is that upon receipt of the approved revenue allocation percentage issued by the standing committee ecg shall effect payment to the energy sector players along the electricity value chain according to the PRC, this is in progress mm. meaning that there's no finality in terms of meeting this 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 directive it is in progress and the last one is that PRC shall validate all payments made along the electricity value chain for an approval month and publish it on the PRC website not later than the second week of the following month and according to the PRC, this will be undertaken after D is completed. And D is that upon receipt of the approved revenue allocation presented issued by the standing committee, ECG shall effect payment to the energy sector players along the uh, electricity value chain. And ECG has yet to meet this demand. Okay. But in the midst of all this, there's some development at the board level of the Electricity Company of Ghana. Give us an update on what we're learning. So information we have this morning is that President Kufaro has appointed Deputy Minister for Energy, Herbert Krapa, as the new chairman of the board of directors of the ECG. Kelly Gajepo, who had chaired the National Electricity Company since 2017, resigned from the role uh, on Tuesday in a letter addressed to the president. His resignation will, however, take effect on Tuesday, 9th April 2024. Mr. Krapa, as you know, a lawyer, will remain in office as Deputy Minister for Energy. His nomination mm -hmm. contained in a letter addressed to his minister, Matopoku Pempe, comes at a time when the country's that the country is experiencing intermittent interruption with electricity supply, a matter the president is determined to overcome in the shortest possible time. And there's another issue bothering the president as we speak. You've been working your sources at the Jubilee House. We know now that there's a clear feud between the Energy Ministry, the ECG, and the PRC. What exactly is happening? So what we have picked is that last week there was a cabinet meeting where the ECG managing director was invited to brief cabinet on what is being done right now. Mm. And the issue about the feud between the the, the energy ministry and then P and then ECG and PRC also came up. Now, President Okufari, we are told, uh, was extremely unhappy with the recent power situation and what appears to be the tension between these bodies. One major contention that has also been in the media, the VRA has been exporting power to the detriment of the local market, whilst export of power gives VRA needed foreign exchange revenue. It has direct impact on reliability of power. And we are told that President Okufari said that there should be 
service of demand mm. before we go to international. Mm. And so when they come in, there's, there may be some variation in terms of how VRA attends some of these things. But clearly, President Kufuado is sitting to resolve this feud that has emerged between the ECG, the Energy Ministry, and PRC. Well, that's um, for ECG, PRC, and the Energy Ministry, and what we are learning from the Jubilee House. We'll stay a while longer on state institutions. One other state institution that has been in the news recently is the Ghana Revenue Authority. We know there have been statements, some back and forth, between the Vice President and the GRA, and we are told there's some shake-up that we are learning at uh, the level of um, the Chief Executive, or is it the Commissioner, and then the Board as well. But uh, Joy Business Editor, George Riafi, joins me in studio with what we're learning um, well, as to what is happening at the GRA. George? So we understand that there have been some changes at the top uh, in the coming days or maybe hours. There could be an official statement coming through from the appointing authority with respect to what has taken place. We cannot, there have been reports about Boche, but we cannot confirm those things. But mm -hmm. what we understand that there have been some changes at the top level and um, the communication the mm -hmm. will come out very soon with respect to who is going out and who is coming in. Okay. And that's a Joy Business Editor, George Riafe, on what we are learning at the GRA. But um, you keep your eyes and ears right here on Joy 99.7 FM and also on myjoyonline.com. All that's unfolding will bring that to you. Now, members of the Locked Up Investment Holders Forum have begun their protest to demand payment of their funds. The group a year ago began engagement with the Bank of Ghana to help them redeem their investment from the financial houses and savings and loans companies. But the group is protesting today because they said the central bank has not demonstrated enough to resolve the matter. Convener of the group, Dr. Edu Ananiantri, says they want the central bank uh, to take over these financial institutions and pay the customers their investments. The proposal, as we have proposed, two methods or approaches. Either you give them money, these institutions that are not able to operate. NDK Financial Services, SDC Financial Services, SIC Life uh, Savings and Loans, and Bond Savings and Loans. Give them support. Find some money. We have said that they should be talking to the uh, development partners to allow them to even use part of the stability fund to do this kind of exercise. Give them some money, which can cover about 20% of investors' funds there, so that investors get about 20% of their funds. The rest we are prepared to convert it into, let's say, a four or three year bond. And we are also prepared to even convert the balance into equity. That's um, Eduan Nani My colleague James Aveji is with the protesters, joins us on the line. James, where are you now and what can you report? Okay, my colleague James Aveji uh, will join us shortly, but we are told that that protest had to be truncated at Circle, and uh, some members have been delegated to see the governor of the Bank of Ghana. We've been hearing some sounds from them. If only they will listen to us. They are wicked people. Because if somebody should work, I worked for about 35 years with the VRA as a technical engineer. See my helmet? So all these money that are accrued, when I retired and it was given to me, I deposit everything so that as and when I need it, I can go there. And also to rely on it at this my old age. Right now I'm 68 years. You can imagine this. So this is what. Well, sir, a customer there interacted with my colleague James Aveji. Thankfully, James joins us back on the line. James, what, what's happening where you are? MFR, so we are currently at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. Uh, we started the protest from the NDK financial offices uh, at the Accra Sports Stadium, hoping that we'll get to the BOG headquarters, as we've been told earlier, only to get to the uh, John Evans at Amel's High Street, the intersecting here, uh, just at the Supreme Court area, and the police redirected the route to the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, saying that we cannot proceed to the BOG. But uh, some selected members of the uh, group have gone to meet the BOG, uh, the governor, and uh, uh, we've just seen them coming in now uh, to address the media on what they have picked up from the BOG. Uh, if we have some time, we can listen to them on what the outcome of the meeting has been. And that's my colleague James Aveji there trying to get us um, to the address by the conveners of this particular protest. Maybe we can listen briefly. Okay. Hello, 
I'm sure James uh, will get us um, to the conveners shortly on this. But let me take you to the apex court. And uh, the court has uh, stood on the hearing of a case filed by NDC MP Roxon Nelson Dapamakwa against the approval of President Akufado's ministerial nominees. Neither the NDC MP nor his lawyers are in court. The five-member panel of the court presided by Chief Justice Getru Tokonu announced in open court that the hearing of the case will be stood down until some facts are verified. But a lot is unfolding as we speak. Uh, there have been some, uh, the bailiff was put before the court on why um, lawyer Nipa Pusamuado failed to be served amongst others. And my colleague on the Legal Affairs Desk, Kwe Kwasante, is at the Supreme Court, joins us uh, on the line with more in terms of what's unfolding in court. A lot happening. Unpack them for us, Kwe MFIS, a lot of drama. First off, the lawyer for Roxy Nelson, Jafar Mekor, and the MP himself, Arnold, in court. And when the case was called, the registrar whispered some words into the just- Chief Justice's ears the Chief Justice was shocked and asked for the bailiff to be brought before the court immediately. When the bailiff was brought, and in fact that is what led to the suspension of proceedings for another case to be called, but when the bailiff was brought before the court, he was actually put under oath, he swore under oath, and then presented some facts to the court. He said he actually went to the law firm of Nipaku Samuado, who is a lawyer for Austin Nelson the Family Court, in whose name the injunction application currently stands in the Supreme Court. And when he did try to serve some documents on the lawyer, including the fact that the case will be heard today, one person called Na at the law firm refused to accept the application because she was operating under the instruction of lawyer Nipa Kusamuad, who had instructed her not to receive any court documents from any person whatsoever. The bailiff says he proceeded to drop the documents on the table of the law firm and left. And the court considers that those documents have now been duly served on the lawyer. But what is interesting now is that the Attorney General says this marks the highest disrespect any person can do in terms of disrespecting the Supreme Court and wants the Supreme Court to take a strong action against this. We do not know if the Supreme Court will refer the lawyer to the General Legal Council disciplinary committee or will probably take action and refer him by way of con- contempt. But the Supreme Court is currently hearing the application for injunction which was filed by Roxy Nelson in the firm of and his lawyers, even when the lawyers for Roxy Nelson in the firm of court and the, 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 the MP himself are not in court. It's also interesting that yesterday, and in fact two days ago also, the lawyers for Roxy Nelson in the firm of court had filed an additional application for injunction to cover Kojo Ponkroma and a number of other ministers that had been reassigned by the president. One other interesting thing that has also happened in court is that we know that on the 22nd, when the Speaker of Parliament abruptly adjourned the House, he relied on the injunction application that was supposedly filed by the MP as a basis for which reason Parliament was unable to approve the minister. In court today, lawyers for the Speaker of Parliament, led by Cardio Sorry, disagree with the grounds that have been filed by the MP for which reason they are canvassing for application. Cardio Sorry is telling the Supreme Court that the grounds do not meet the strict requirements that have been said by the Supreme Court in several other cases for the court to grant an application. And so, Tadio Sorry is on his feet at the time I left the courtroom, making a case for why the Supreme Court should reject the application for injunction that has been filed. The Attorney General has also made a similar case in court. He says that he believes the case is frivolous in his own words, but has not been granted audience to make a specific argument to this application. Certainly a lot happening at the Supreme Court. My colleague Kweku Asante uh, monitoring uh, the situation and will give us uh, details of what's happening um, subsequently. And maybe before we end uh, the bulletin, if there's a decision from the Supreme Court, we'll get back there for all the details for you. But the West Africa Examination Council, WAEC, is expressing worry about the delay in payment of invigilators and supervisors that engage their services in the conduct of previous examinations. The arrears amounting to 50 million CDs have been accrued from 2020 to 2023 and cover invigilators, marking allowance and practicals. In an address to the media, Head of Public Affairs at WIAC, John Cappy said, any further delays in payment by the Finance Ministry will hurt this year's conduct of the examination. Okay, so for um, 2022, the government still owes us 9.9 uh, Ghana cities. For the 2023 examinations, we, are, we still have an outstanding balance of 49 million Ghana cities. And also for practical fees, we have an outstanding balance of 7.4 million Ghana cities. These are uh, balances that are yet to be uh, paid to the council. So how is that going to affect your work if it's not uh, settled? 
Well, so far we are we received some money that we are going to start to pay um, the um, invigilators and supervisors. We are waiting for further payments so that we can also settle the uh, payments for itinerant examiners and uh, supervisors and invigilators for the worst for school candidates 2023. Well, meanwhile, head of legal at WIEC, Victor Brew, has um, revealed that about 30 culprits of various examination offences are still before the court for prosecution. Taking us on a quick break here on the Midday News, live on Joy, 99.7 FM in Accra, in Kumasi on Love, 99.5 FM. We're on a number of affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions. The Midday News is sponsored by Petro Soul. Your clean fuel in full quantity. Petro Soul is always a delightful experience, also made possible by Dura Plus Ghana Limited, producers of quality people. PVC and HDP pipes and water tank. The only water storage tank with a level indicator where Dura Plus goes, water flows. We've been to the Apex Court where lawyer for Nikpakusamwa, lawyer Nikpakusamwa, who refuses service of documents from the Supreme Court bailiff, tells judges as a case against approval of uh, President Akofado's ministerial nominees takes an interesting twist at the Supreme Court. We return from the break and we focus on the LOC. They've been hitting back at the minority as it assures it will avail itself for scrutiny in the coming days. We'll get to hear from the chairman of the LOC on how, among others, the intermittent power cuts in- increased the cost of organizing the games. At any point in time, there will be challenges, financial, physical. How do you set your priorities? How does he want us to grow sports in Ghana? How does he want it to come up with, with options? Budgets are tight and money difficult to come by. You want to be sure you get the best value for your money. These are not times to be spending money fixing expensive engine problems because of cheap fuel and lubricants. Drive to a petrol source station today and buy your quality fuel and lubricants and rest assured of fuel that lasts long and lubricants that prevent expensive engine problems. Hear the sound. <laughs> petrol source, clean fuel in full quantity. Many thanks for staying with us here on the Midday News and participants at the Star Ghana Join News Ghana Connect Town Hall in the Ashanti Regional Capital Kumasi have called on political parties to fashion manifestos that will respond to the real needs of Ghanaians. According to them, the unaddressed challenges of inadequate resources in schools, overburdened healthcare systems, pervasive corruption among others are major setbacks to the development of the country. There's more in the following report. The residents present at the Presbyterian Church premises in Edum did not hide their disappointment at the slow pace of development Ghana has seen over the years. They want political parties to pay particular attention to issues of health and education in their 2024 manifestos. China Chinese children are skilled at making many things. While ours lack training, we add parties to include skill development for our children in their manifestos. Let's not politicize issues of healthcare delivery. Let's prioritize policies that will be beneficial to us and the next generation. Executive Director of Africa Education, Watch Kofiasari, laid emphasis on some major challenges facing basic education in Ghana. We've done four years of a new curriculum and three years of the junior high school curriculum, but we don't have textbooks. The first batch of junior high school students who use the new curriculum are writing BCE in a couple of weeks. We, we don't have textbooks. Meanwhile, project manager at Star Ghana, Dr. Ernestine Atete, said political leaders must listen to the continuous call from citizens to complete projects started by previous successive governments. If you have uncompleted projects and it's their money that you are going, you abandon, start yeah. a new one, and, so you don't even listen. Get ready because the Star Ghana Joy News Ghana Connect Town Hall train will soon make a stop at your neighborhood to hear your voice too. 
Now, the local organizing committee of the 2023 African Games has responded to criticisms from the minority by pledging to undergo thorough scrutiny soon. According to the executive chairman of the LOC, Dr. Kweku Fusuasari, among others, unexpected challenges such as intermittent power cuts contributed to the increased cost of organizing the Games. On Wednesday, the minority in parliament called for a comprehensive investigation into the $240 million budget allocated for the Games. Minority spokesperson on youth and sports, Kobna Mensa, where you may emphasize the need for this probe. And we boldly say as a country that we have had value for money amid the economic hardship. Government should have been more prudent. Well, the local organizing committee of the 2023 African Games is disputing the allegations. We can hear from Dr. Kweko Fusuasai. At any point in time, there will be challenges, financial, physical. How do you set your priorities? How does he want us to grow sports in Ghana? How does he want? He should come up with options. That if we don't build facilities, now when you want to develop sports, you have to think of four pillars. The talents, the facilities, the coaches or trainers, and the resources. So if you don't try and harness all these areas, there's no way you can develop sports. Well, some volunteers of the Games clashed with officials over what they described as the unpaid allowances on Wednesday. But Dr. Kweko Fuswasare is attributing the concern to miscommunication. I think, I think it was miscommunication, misunderstanding. They didn't get it well. Me, the first time I met, I said, give me a definition of volunteers or volunteerism. Go and check the definition. And the communication and the, 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 the what was given them, the, 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 the letter given them. Yes. There was nothing like money. money. That's uh, the LOC chairman, Dr. Kweko Fuswasai. Safe driving saves lives. Drive safe. And it's time for a drive safe campaign and some of commercial drivers in Accra are demanding the relocation of drinking sports from bus terminals as concerns grow that some drivers patronize alcohol and other hard drugs before embarking on journeys. It follows alarming carnage on the country's roads, which has left 370 persons dead in, the, in just January and February alone this year. The situation has prompted the National Road Safety Authority to announce the deployment of officers to the various terminals to clamp down on alcoholism and drug abuse among drivers. Yeah, I'm worried about the joints being created just around the station because it's even nearby. So if a driver is on scale, he can quickly just bend the corner and just go and take alcohol, which is not the best. So if there is something they can do about that to, you know, drive them away, far away from the station. Because if you are looking for passengers, I don't know if the place is far. I don't think you can leave your car behind and go to a far place to go and drink alcohol before you, are, before you come and drive. So I think education should also be given to them so that they can be relocated at least far away from the station. Because I don't think if I am coming to drive right now and my car is on scale and the place is far, I can walk to that place before coming to drive. You understand? So I think their presence around the station is also a cause, a major factor that is making the drivers also take the alcohol. Yeah, so I think something has to be done about it, please. And that's our Drive Safe campaign for today. And our tip, don't drink and drive any alcohol. Even a small amount can impair your driving. So be a safe driver. Don't drink and drive, especially during this Easter season. And MNJ, they're in yeah. the studios. Yeah. Hey, what's up? A lot, though. Yeah, nice. a lot is happening. A lot is happening. Um, uh, on Twitter, um, Tema General Hospital is trending. Yeah. And Twitter writers are reporting that there was a power outage at the Tema General Hospital yesterday. And some babies are seen in a viral video, you know, struggling in their incubators and all of that. And um, Twitter is not really happy with that. Roland Walker says, um, at Roland Walker says, babies and other patients at the Tema General Hospital suffering because of no lights. A timetable from ECG enables everyone to plan, including this hospital. And then this one from Dre addresses a whole Thema General Hospital and you can't fuel your own plans. Yes, we all know how incompetent this government is. And that should be enough reason to always have a backup plan. Well, interesting. Mm. Well, let me fast. So, hashtag... And I know people are bringing their own timetables as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got my this morning. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, have my, I have mine too. Uh, <laughs> no, I slept in darkness last night. Oh, but, no, today I'm sleeping in darkness. Oh, 
And then, then <laughs> I'm so, just kidding. Hashtag stop sextortion is trending. Apparently, uh-huh. it's a type of cyber blackmail. So this trend originated with some students from KNUSD who are assisting in combating this extortion. So they expressed their intention to eradicate digital extortion and sexual blackmail, which coincides to, um, coincides with the increasing incidence of individuals, nude videos and pictures that mm. are being leaked on social media. So basically, the trend is teaching netizens how to be in charge of their privacy online. Okay. And that's how we wrap up today's edition of the Midday News. There's more when you log on to myjoyonline.com. We have Living Word with Pastor Mensa Otabil. Up next, I am Emefa Apau. Have a good afternoon.